So we're using the SUSE Enterprise Linux machine here, so SUSE Linux Enterprise 11, but we could be using SUSE or we could be using CentOS 6 or Red Hat 6. The 6 range, so be it 6 or 6.1 or 6.5, all uses the legacy Grub or the original Grub. Whereas if you're using OpenSUSE or if you're using Ubuntu or Fedora, well, they all use Grub too. For the moment, we're concentrating on the enterprise version of Grub that's found with Grub Legacy. I've logged on as a standard user, and you can see I've got my command prompt open. If I just run the command mount without any options or any arguments, we can see then the mounted file systems. And just a quick check, I can see that devsda6 is mounted to the root file system. Looking at everything else, everything else is virtual file systems or pseudo file systems. This means then that the boot directory must be part of the root file system itself. There is no separate partition for boot. So we can see this then as SDA6. Within the boot directory, when I run a listing here, then we can see that I've got symbolic links. We can see by the color coding that LS is giving me here that the VM liners and initRD file with nothing else are symbolic links. If I do an LS minus L on VM liners, I can see then that it points through so it's a link in the file system that points through to the actual kernel itself. And the same way with the RAM disk. We also have zipped up versions. The red files are just zipped up versions. So let's just clear the screen and we're going to go through and look at rebooting the machine and looking at how we can use Grub interactively during the boot phase. So if we gain root privileges and then just issue the command reboot. We'll see the menu later, but this is the content essentially of the menu.lst that we could find within forward slash boot, forward slash grub and menu.lst. If I just up arrow key and down arrow key, it's going to stop any timer. So there is a timer and it would automatically select the default entry if I didn't interrupt it. We're going to hit the escape key to move away from the graphical boot menu through to the text boot menu. And from here, if I choose the letter E, I can edit the entry or the letter C. I can go to a grub command line. So now I'm working at a grub command line. Remember, this is a bootstrap file. It is a tiny operating system itself. If I type help, it will display some of the things that it can do. But to be able to boot the system, first of all, we need to identify the root. The grub root points to the partition that hosts the directory boot. And for us, we know that that was the root partition. So HD0, the first drive. Now we don't put SDA6, we put, S we just put then partition number five. The partitions, as far as the kernel is concerned, when we look at SDA6, it numbers the kernels, n numbers the partitions rather, from partition number one. Whereas Grub numbers the first partition as partition zero in the same way as the first disk is disk zero. So this is pointing to SDA6, it's just the numbering system is di different. Again, they like to keep us on our toes. So we've identified the type of file system that it is. And then we need to load the kernel. I can get tab completion here. So we can go into then boot and then VM. And we can see then the files that match. I can use the symbolic link here. So VM Linux. 
So we've picked up then on our kernel image. We now need the initialization RAM disk. So the commands root, kernel, and initrd are required. And then we can go through and put again boot and init rd. We hit enter on that. And now I can hit B to boot. Of course, in a normal situation, we would provide more arguments through to the kernel, but this is enough to get the system up and running. Sorry, just boot to boot. And we can see now that we're going through the normal boot process. So you can see now that we've got the login screen and there's no difference as if we had booted up in the normal manner without editing it as we did. We can see using Grub, we can interactively work with the Grub loader using E to edit or C as we chose to create completely new entries at the Grub command line. But for now, we'll leave this video and come back straight away to look at how we create entries in the menu.lst file.